Hey everybody, Rick from Explorer 506 Overland. Gonna do a walk around on the old rig. And we'll just flip the camera around and get showing you what uh, things I've done to this Welcome old Welcome to Explorer 506 Overland. My name is Rick. My co-pilot navigator is my wife Heather. Together we are turning a grocery getter explorer into an overland rig. Located on the east coast of Canada where we can adventure from the rolling hills, back roads, and the ocean all in the same day. Our current rig is a 2000 Ford Explorer mm -hmm. XLT. Follow along as we build our rig and explore the East Coast and beyond. Subscribe, like, and share. Hit the bell for notifications. Thank you. So today's video, vlog episode two, is a walk around of our 2000 Ford Explorer, also known as Nessie. So run of the mill 2000 Ford Explorer XLT has a four liter overhead valve engine currently running 277,000 kilometers $600 five years ago we drove it home it needed body work I'll throw some pictures in to show what it looked like when we first got it and you can see the changes that has gone through uh, let's fire it up So it needed rocker panels, quarter panels, and the floor done uh, last year. Oh. Hmm. It's there. Let's go over the outside and mechanical stuff first. So last week, set of 31 inch tires and on. They're all right. Time will tell if I uh, actually like them or not. All right, so the bodywork was done. You'll notice something different about the rocker panel area. There are no rocker panels. Or what used to be rocker panels is now a two by four structural steel, all welded in. Gives it a nice flat area so it's a rocker panel potential slider all in one I am going to get a set of uh, side steps made for it so while we're down here let's look at uh, the rear I put shackles in the back and add a leaf I'm going to uh, re uh, do the leaf springs this spring summer because when I get the cargo uh, drawers put in the back and all our gear, I want it to sit level with all that weight in it. The front had the torque twist done. I'll probably have to level it up once I uh, raise the back. Like I said, I want to keep it sitting as level as possible. So some homemade limb lines. I'll do a separate video on uh, making those. I had the front bumper given to me. It had a like a bush guard on it as well. And honest to hell, it's with that uh, extra tubing and everything on it. It was all I could have to lift it up. So they interfered to the headlight, so they got hacked off. Our 12,500 pound winch is by AC-DK, sitting on a Runva winch plate, which is mounted to a receiver. And all that is bolted to the frame and reinforced for the bumper. Our Rhino USA uh, receiver amber uh, driving light the grill lights separate video on those as well Prince's Auto is a Canadian version of uh, Harbor Freight and that's where the roof basket came from I did the decals myself that basket's uh, about as old as the Explorer, five years or so, and it's showing signs of wear, so I'll have to take care of that once the weather gets a little nicer. The light bar is a 42 inch from Amazon, curved. Now I have that switched 
right here. Okay, it did come on. Two hundred and seventy-seven, three hundred and six kilometers. So I hacked the uh, console and put uh, the narrow Coolatron uh, cooler in its place. I just got to finish uh, trimming that out and mounting that. Now, pardon the mess. But this is still a project, and uh, this week I'll actually get it all cleaned out and start measuring for the cargo drawers and the sleep platform that's going to go in here. Now the platform is going to come right up to behind the seat, so the compressor, batteries, and storage area can all be in here, and then the drawers will be seven or eight inches high, another sheet of plywood over top, that will box all of this stuff in. The rear seat's not going back in. I just temporarily mounted the charge controller for the uh, solar panel. I run the wires all in, just want to make sure everything was working. So that's going to get uh, mounted on a little plate where it's easy to get to. We have a 2000 watt inverter we're going to run in here as well. That will power the compressor and uh, a couple other things that we have. It'll also be a charging station for our uh, power box and all our USB gear. Hundred watt solar panel, keeping everything topped up. I'm going to uh, make a new swing out bumper for this. It'll be a project for this summer. And that's pretty much it. Mechanic wise, uh, the motor transmission worked really good. Transfer case needed a shift motor for it. So that was an easy fix. The brakes uh, failed on us one day. There's a video on that. It was actually the day I had hand surgery. So I pinched the line off best we could and we nursed it home. And then I ordered all new complete brake system. Master cylinder, calipers, rotors, flex hoses, all the brake lines, all new. I did the same with the fuel lines. Transmission cooler got put in. The Rancho shocks got put on. And uh, it's actually uh, quite comfortable on the road. A little stubby antenna from Amazon. Amazing, uh, it still brings in stations from St. John. So we're about 120 kilometers away from there. It's not so meant to look pretty. It's a functional rig, not a showpiece. So part of our recovery gear is the uh, Amazon Special recovery boards. Uh, check to make sure they're made out of nylon and not plastic. These ones are nylon. Uh, very similar compound to Max Tracks. Our fiberglass handle shovel. It's a sturdy shovel. It's got the welded uh, top to it. So it will go through rock, sand, snow, whatever you need it to. So there's a quick overview of how the rig sits for watching. right now. If you like what your uh, content I'm putting out, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you guys for episode three next week. Cheers.